Phonology. Phonotactics. In a previous video, I had you go over this exercise where you looked at nonsense words and had to decide if they were possible words of English or not. And I take it this probably wasn't very hard for you. So for example, that first word, mall. It's just not possible because that ng sound at the beginning isn't possible at the beginning of a word in English. Our phonotactics don't allow it. The ng sound can come at the end of a syllable. So it can come in the middle of a word as long as it's at the end of a syllable, or it can come at the end of a word. It cannot come at the beginning of a word because that would force it to be at the beginning of a syllable. And that just doesn't happen in English. On the other hand, a word like slig is perfectly fine. We have no problem with that. The phonotactics of that are perfect. But a word like tlin is not. And the reason is because of that t o right next to each other at the beginning of a syllable. That that voiceless alveolar stop immediately followed by a voiced alveolar lateral liquid just doesn't happen. There seems to be a phonotactic constraint against that. And in fact, we also don't get a voiced alveolar stop immediately before l either. So we wouldn't get glin either. They're not hard to pronounce. They're just not part of English. Our phonotactics forbid it. A word like brud, though, again, perfectly good. There's nothing wrong with the phonotactics of that. Uh, buzz is problematic just because of that er sound, which is a front rounded vowel. And in English, we just don't have front rounded vowels. And so again, it's just not part of our sound system. But break, good. So we see that that's part of our intuitions. That's part of our mental grammar is that we know what sounds sequences are possible and what aren't. And that is the phonotactics. So the phonotactics in some are the rules to state which sound sequences are possible in language and which are not. So for example, at the beginning of a word, S cannot precede voiced stops. So in other words, speak or steep or sto, not possible, right? So again, it's not that these are impossible to say, it's just that they're not possible in English. But as can proceed voiceless stops. So we can get speak, skip, or sto, and those are perfectly fine as long as they are voiceless, not voiced. It is important to notice that over time, phonotactics can change. So the phonotactics of Old English are different than the phonotactics of contemporary English. So for example, if we think about our words knife and night, which have absurd spellings. Well, the absurd spellings are because they, they have frozen the spelling, but the sounds changed. And in fact, at one time, knife would have been pronounced Kneef with a long E sound, and night would have been pronounced Kniecht with a long E sound. So that K was pronounced in both of those words. We had that sequence, K-N was perfectly fine, Kn. Um, and then also we should notice that we used to have this uh, voiceless velar fricative kh in English, which we lost. Today, for example, if we were to borrow the German word Kneipe, and in German, the K-N sequence is perfectly fine at the beginning of a syllable, Kneipe. But if we were to borrow that word into English, we would probably just lop off the K sound and pronounce it something like Kneipe. Phonotactic constraints can also tell us 
what can count as a syllable. So there are certain constraints on, for example, how many consonants you can have at the beginning of a syllable or how many consonants you can have at the end of a syllable. English allows a maximum of three consonants at the beginning and end of syllables. So an example of a word with the maximum would be splints, which has that sp -o at the beginning and nt at the end. In another language, Polish notably, you can have up to four consonants at the beginning and up to five consonants at the end of syllables. Now, I don't speak Polish. I'll do my best to pronounce this. So the word modeled would be something like str, str, where you've got p, s, t, r. Uh, it's probably more of a trilled r. r, 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 r. I can't do trilled r's. Um, or at the end of it, you get this uh, word that I find a little difficult to pronounce, but I'll, I'll do my best again. Um, means after aftermath in the genitive plural, and it's something like nastemst, nastemst. And there you've got mpst. So you've got those five consonants at the end of that syllable. In another language, Hawaiian, However, you can only get one consonant in any syllable, and that consonant has to be at the beginning of the syllable. You can have syllables with no consonants, but you can have a maximum of one syllable at the beginning in a syllable of Hawaiian. So, for example, take a well-known word of Hawaiian, um, aloha, which has that a all by itself, just a syllable by itself, lo and ha. All right, so hopefully that gives you a sense of how phonotactics work. They're the constraints on what are possible sequences in a given language.